Hey everybody, um, someone sent me a message asking about the skirt model on the um, on my robot that I rigged in one of the previous videos. So I thought I would make a quick video just showing you how I how I made that. A um, couple different options for that. I think this will work. This is actually a new tool that is in here. This polygon disc. So if I create, if I click that, and we get this. Uh, you know what? I am not. Yeah, so I change this to pi. Yeah, I don't know. This this may be the wrong way of going here. Triangles. There we go. Caps. So I really just need. Um, so we could do it this way. We could also do it with a cylinder because the cylinder also has those same um, controls. Um, so I could do the. Um, not only height, I just need more cap divisions, right? So I go ahead and do something like this. Right? I'm sure I'll put quite a few in there. Uh, maybe even quite a few subdivision points, right? Um, so either of these would work. I'll go ahead and just show you the sort of the old way, the hard way of doing it. Um, and then I would just delete all of this stuff down below. Right? So all I have is that cap, right? The other thing I would do is I would delete sort of a, a circle of faces here that I need. So I don't need those or these, right? And then for me, I just I just had this that happened to loop around my my character's waist relatively well, right? Um, now the thing you'll notice, my pivot point is down here. Um, I can go to modify center pivot, and so now it's back up there in the center. I can scale that up. And so let's say this is the object that I'm going for. So um, this isn't exactly accurate, but you can think of this as sort of a, uh, um, if you were to take a skirt and just sort of stretch it out, that maybe it would do something like this. And in all honesty, it probably wouldn't lay out this flat, but this is a, a place to start. The last thing I wanna do before we turn this into a skirt is I'm gonna go um, edit, delete by type history. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna get rid of my Input. So I'm going to go modify freeze transformations. And so now it's a pretty new object. Right? Now, we've already seen this in the past that if I were to put a sphere here, um, I'm going to go to effects and turn this into NCOTH. Right? It's just going to, let me set this to playback speed, every frame, actual time. I hit play and it's just going to fall. Right? And if I were to make this a Passive collider would sort of fall and wrap around it, right? So you're kind of getting the idea of what I'm, where I'm going with this, right? Um, so I could do something like that. Uh, let's say I get it to about this point here, right? hit stop, and so now this is the place my mesh is. And if I hit play, it'll keep falling. But if I just hit Control D, um, I can hit play and that piece is going to stay there forever because that's not an NCOF. That's just a mesh that's been duplicated, right? If I hit three, I get kind of this this mesh shape, right? Um, I'll show you another way of doing that without the sphere that works pretty well, which is I'm going to delete that, delete the sphere. Um, right now, again, it's just going to fall. But if I were to go in here and grab all of these edges right here, um, there's some in constraints right? and what this is is where I can constrain parts of my mesh to another object think of a um, a belt or something like that right so let's just give this as a belt I'm going to go to in constraint with those edge selected and just say transform constraint and basically what's going to happen now is those are going to stay in that location it's going to stay in the same point as here right but the rest of the mesh is going to fall so I can start getting something like that and then again, whenever I'm happy with how it looks, just as sort of a default shape, um, I'm, you know, I can, I can, uh, you know, keep it there. Right? Now, let's say I wanted to actually make this simulate. Right? I would probably do this step last. Right? Uh, the the constraint. But again, this part here, I can I can move around. I think. Let's see if I hit S there. Moved it over to here. That's there. If I hit play, you'll know, see my constraint kind of moves, right? So I'm going to undo those two keyframes. Instead of moving it, 
if I were to put a sphere in here right, and parent this dynamic constraint underneath the sphere, then I can animate this sphere around anywhere I want to, right? Let's say my, my sphere is you know, walking over to here right, and along that way I have it do like little bounces whatever as it as it goes along. Now I know my skirt's messing up every frame of that, but I'm not too worried about that. So what I get now is sort of dancing along with it, right? Now you start to see some of the problems with fabric <laughs> um, is that it can mess up really quickly. Um, doesn't some of that is solvable in a couple of different ways. More than likely, it's messing up on a specific frame. It seems like it's going okay there. Wait one more second. Um, it's right there where it's messing up. Um, I think part of that is because this is not a collider. So if I went to in cloth, um, create passive collider, I think we'll get something that works a little bit better there. There we go. All right. And so it's still sticking just a little bit there, but we can kind of play around with that a little bit until we can you know, get that a little bit better. So hopefully this, this is helpful. Um, I'm going to go ahead and save this video, upload it to uh, the band page, and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. Bye.